Hello, gang. Chapo coming at you Monday, January 10th. How's it going, fellas? It's good. It's cracking. Yeah. I'm uh, first day of the month that I will be living under the Newsom regime. It's part of a journalism project I am doing. It's about, um, you know, I go to places that are enemies of NATO, places that they have attempted a color revolution in. And right now I'm doing California. And uh, I have to say, I've been walking around and I don't agree with the Newsom regime on everything, but his people love him. That's true. He, he is a god emperor, basically. Yeah. You won't see that in the Western media. You won't no. see people, how people happy people are under the Newsom regime. Well, yeah. I mean, as you guys know, Newsom and his inner circle follow a sort of syncretic version of Christianity where there's no God or Christ and you do communion. But communion is you fuck a 43 year old woman who spent a hundred thousand dollars on fillers <laughs> together with your friends. <laughs> That's taking the Eucharist. Yeah. Um, and it's people say he discriminates against normal Christians and Jews and stuff, but they're actually they're well taken care of here. Newsom has gone to Christmas celebrations. There's a lot of videos of him doing that. Um, and people are people are happy like they you know, it's not my way of life. But they like doing the things that Newsom makes them do, like um, you know they can't use they can't use single use toothpaste tubes now, and they have to get uh, like paper bags of toothpaste filled up every week <laughs> to replace it. But they like it. They like they like it. They like Newsom, and I have to say I'm pretty glad that the color revolution was defeated. Yeah, the Larry Elder led color revolution. Mm-hmm. What what about the report? I mean, I mean. I, I just I hear reports in the the Western press that people are being disappeared from the Erewhon grocery. <laughs> well, yeah, but if you like look at the people who were going to Erewhon, uh, they were causing problems. They were like there's a strong link between like the the moms who were giving everyone grief at Erewhon for mislabeling of nut allergies and Al Qaeda. And did you know that Israel actually set up a field hospital for those women, <laughs> for those moms? Israel, do you know that Israel has bombed California 78 times in the last five years? And they've, ne- they've never hit the anti-vax Al-Qaeda in Orange County. It's very interesting. Yeah. Weird coincidence that. Yeah. Yeah, like, I mean, I'm looking forward to your reporting on, um, on uh, out, you know, state actors, um, CIA back spooks, color revolutionaries. Going into Erewhon and switching the labels on the pasteurized and non-pasteurized milk, and also switching the labels on the sugar you can get with your coffee or the Elkhorn powder, and it, it's, it's fucking people up. And honestly, like, I, the gruesome Gavin needs to he needs to bring down the hammer hard on these um uh, these quote unquote protesters, these democratic revolutionaries. We're, we're too smart for that. We see through it. Yeah. I mean, again, it's like I don't agree, agree with Gruesome Gavin and everything. Like, people are showing their loyalty to Gruesome Gaz- Gavin's policies by wearing three masks while alone in a car. But I do wish that Kathy Molecule had his firm hand. That's true. She's, she's, she doesn't really have the sand to stand up the way that uh, he does, which yeah. is why uh, Gavin, I think, more like people say, oh, he might run for president. He's just going to become president of California. Yeah, that's it. He's just going to declare formal independence. And Kathy Molecule, I don't think she'll ever have the balls to do it. His weird shit doesn't play anywhere but California. Like yeah. if you if you put him in front of like um, a, a beef slurry purveyor in Iowa, you know, uh, the first caucus, he would just be like, wait, what? Like, so your thing is you've just you've you've fucked every woman in your state. Your 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 th- your thing is that you just like secrete your own spermicidal lube from your pubes just naturally. That you're you're just completely slippery. No one can shake your hand. And he'd be like, I'm imagining yeah. him. I'm imagining him going to the Iowa State Fair and looking for the French Laundry tent to get like some <laughs> yeah. dicks or something. Gavin Newsom has never had a meal that didn't include sea foam. Yep. No. He is. He needs foam. He, he will yeah. not eat it if there's no foam. Well, yeah, he can't secrete the spermicidal lube without the foam. <laughs> yeah. It's important to his biological process. It's a Californian photosynthesis. <laughs> uh, 
I mean, you know, he, he has a vasectomy, but don't worry, he can still blow loads of squid ink. <laughs> yeah, that's the other thing that's weird is in Iowa, there's a big thing where they make all the candidates jack off and squirt if they're women. And uh, like, not only a political. I remember insiders. Matt and I were there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We saw it. That was actually, yeah, that was actually like why people were like, people were like, oh, why did de Blasio run? He shot the furthest rope out of anyone <laughs> when he did Yeah, that. I remember we went to that. We were, we wore uh, parkas. It was like a Gallagher concert. You couldn't be in the first three rows unless you were ready to get wet. Yeah, they've been doing that. They've been doing that since Warren Harding won the nomination. <laughs> people think it was a fix. No, he was the best at jacking off. But Gavin would be the first guy who blows completely black cum. Or actually, no, John Hickenlooper did that. And that's yes. like why he didn't go that far. Yeah. That was, yeah, that was just the water he'd been drinking, though. I'm just saying Gavin, Gavin Newsom has an ink gland. Yeah, he's part squid. He's a man of the bay. But as the king of California, I think he'll rule forever. Oh, yeah. Thousand year Reich, for sure. Yeah. And they solved climate change here. It rains now in L.A. It's true. They got a bunch of rain. They got like a month's worth of rain. He did the right unholy incantations. No, he got all the runes. No one, like, everyone criticizes the governor when bad stuff happens, which they should, but no one praises the governor when they get the right runes. Yeah, like when they're going into chasms and, like, solving uh, demonic riddles from ancient gatekeepers. You don't hear anybody uh, talking about that on Twitter. Yeah, no. Kathy Molecule buys her runes from Etsy, and they're all fake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's never found a rune in her life. She's never answered a riddle from a blind beggar who is actually a demigod. She sucks. Well, um, uh, speaking of uh, alternate, alternate med- alternate alternative medicine, uh, which is you know California, the epicenter of that. Uh, just it's just just a quick quick news story to uh, kick things off today. Um, anti-vax leader urges followers to drink their own urine to fight COVID. Mm. I mean, I think we all knew that this was going here eventually, but uh, just reading from the Daily Beast here, it says. Anti-COVID-19 vaccine police leader Christopher Key. And uh, there's a photo of this guy, and he literally has a badge that he wears around his neck that says vaccine police. It's like a fake police badge. (laughs) See, that is very confusing because to me, that is the person who enforces the vaccine. Yeah. The vaccine. Yeah, Yeah. 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 I don't really. I think it's some mixed messaging here. I got to say, though, like. We're going to laugh at the piss drinking thing. What if it works? I feel like in like, you know, nine to 10 months, we're probably like, they're, they're, it's probably going to come out that it does work. Yeah. Well, and, uh, people are really, I mean, they're going, yeah, everything is reaching its logical conclusion where we've gotten inevitably to the pee drinking and also colloidal silver. I'm people so are happy on that's the right back. endorsing colloidal silver. So we'll see. The people who will see, it'll be like all the people who idiotically got the vaccine are going to start dropping dead any day now. And the only people who are going to be left are going to be the blues and the yellows. I was very happy to see Candace Owens talking about drinking colloidal silver. Yes. that I mean, she has big reach. Like, I used to think the colloidal silver thing died off because it's a very internet form libertarian thing. And so many guys turned blue <laughs> that people just stopped doing it. But she's such a she's like such a fucking dummy that she's bringing back colloidal silver. Like yep. I, the last colloidal silver guy died in like 2007. He was just some dope from Idaho who would go on Dr. Phil and they'd be like, well, how'd you turn blue? And, and now like, oh, uh, I was drinking this thing. And now Dr. Oz is on the train too. Wait, Dr. Oz is a silver guy. He's a silver guy. Now he's talking about colloidal silver. So I think this is going to be, if there is a hope for the Democrats, because I mean, everyone understands the Democrats are doomed here in the short and medium and long term as the going concern. If they can just wedge between the urine people and the silver people, they might have a chance. But that's it. Dr. Oz, though, I mean, uh, what's she, what she running for Senate in Pennsylvania? Running for right? Senate in Pennsylvania. Yes. The Turk okay. is drawn to Pennsylvania. <laughs> it's, there's something it's like, about it. Yeah. The, the coal. I don't know. Yeah, well, it's like it's like Highland, like how all the Highlanders wanted to go to, or all the immortals in Highlander wanted to go to New York. Yeah, there's something there. There's some like ancient ley lines, some, something going on. Yeah, the last Roxy in America is somewhere in Western PA, and the Turk must find it. The uh, they find the like the Caliph will be like re enshrined 
at a combination Wawa sheets right in the middle of the state. <laughs> yeah, no, it'll that'll be the next Mechmet the Magnificent. It will be a guy who like he takes over all of the Eastern Seaboard and then the the entire all of North America and then all the entire Western Hemisphere. But it will be because he was looking for one of his headphones. <laughs> they won't even be good headphones. It will be like the Brookstone AirPods. <laughs> but I mean, as long as we're talking about uh, the colloidal silver, uh, drinking your own urine. I don't know if you guys saw this. I, I just read it this morning. Um, you know, like the, the it's like the group like 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 a uh, uh, frontline doctors like, like fighting. They're 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 the ivermectin hydrochloroquine people. Yeah. Um, they have added another drug to the uh, course of medicines that you're supposed to take to prevent and cure COVID. And there's like, if step one doesn't work or you're still experiencing symptoms, you know, five to 10 days after, there's a list of other drugs that they're recommending you take. Chief among them is the most common hormone blocker that blocks testosterone <laughs> that is literally used <laughs> in trans healthcare. As part of the yeah. transitioning process, um, I am uh, that's shit. now that's some O Henry shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the gift damn, of the dude. magi. That's like is... I don't want. I don't want your global homo vaccine. And then, oh no, I'm a chick now. Damn it! Yeah. <laughs> the first guy who did that. The first guy who did that is racist Amelia Bedelia. <laughs> <laughs> like oh oh you said you said you were you said you were doing a non cucked cure for COVID and now we're all bimbo fied, <laughs> but you sure make a hell of a pie. Uh, just uh, following up on the uh, the urine drinking, uh, Christopher Key, the vaccine police, the, <laughs> turn in your vaccine badge. Got, I get results, damn it. Uh, it says here uh, has a new quarter baked conspiracy theory for his anti vax followers to use to cure themselves of COVID nineteen. Drink their own urine. I'm glad that they specified your own urine. Yeah, right. Drinking someone else's. You don't else's know where other people's urine is bad. Oh, that's dangerous. Yeah, that's, that's, oh, I always fuck this up. I brought a big metal twisty straw on the plane over. <laughs> and, ooh, boy, was I slurping. Usually, when I go to the bathroom five times during a flight, it's to vape. <laughs> this time, I was taking in the liquid instead of turning it into gas. Uh, Felix has one of those giant double cup styrofoam. <laughs> yeah. yeah. With now and later, it's flowing in it, floating in it. You're just like, yeah. pour up. I was pouring the Sprite and the Jolly Rancher into my jet blue airplane piss. <laughs> Dude, that shit got me gone. <laughs> I'm, I'm going slow mo. I'm, I'm turning all the COVID virus <laughs> going slow mo. <laughs> um, okay, so it says here. Um, uh, the antidote that we have seen now, and we have tons and tons of research, I think it's like gallons and gallons of research, is urine therapy. Okay, and I know a lot of you, uh, to a lot of you, this sounds crazy, but guys, God's given us everything we need. Key said That's in a video. <laughs> Key said in a video posted over the weekend on his Telegram account after being released from jail over a trespassing charge. This has been around for centuries, he added. I mean, I think urine it's has been around for yeah, quite, quite a bit longer than that. Yeah, it's <laughs> from it's, centuries. What did he, <laughs> for centuries? What did he think ancient man was doing with their waste? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, yeah, it's just like it's just like being like, oh, yeah, it's like Lindy to shit in your drinking reservoir. <laughs> <'Cause> people <laughs> 900 years ago did it. Before corn syrup, uh, the body wasn't uh, completely efficient. You didn't yeah. have any waste of any kind. It was yeah. all absorbed. It was just water. It was just free. Body. Hey, yeah. hey, urine, it's free water. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, I, I will say that one of the great UFC light heavyweight champions and a great middleweight too, Lyoto Machida, he did urine therapy. And it was the subject of a lot of mockery. Uh, but he was, he, 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 fought, he fought really well. And he actually did worse after people started making fun of him for drinking his pee pee. But that then again, he that's a guy who did karate his whole life and was probably drinking like rainforest water. Uh, I don't think if you're like a big gulp guy, if you're drinking as much soda as these guys, if you're drinking, if you're drinking like a Dunkachino morning surprise fucking milkshake, Oreo, Oreo flavor blast, that's you're not getting anything out of drinking that piss. No, it's it's what you it's like what you get out of it is what you put into yourself. Yeah, um, I mean, so that, that's why like he talked about people doing it centuries ago. The piss from centuries ago was good because they did the healthiest thing, which is every morning you drink thirty two ounces of one percent ABV beer. That's right. Or like you know, in ancient times, you'd wake up and you'd start your day 
with, you know, a grande, a grande pond water. Yeah. And you just get that going through you. And uh, yeah, the health benefits are obvious. But um, he says here, uh, yes, this has been around for centuries. When I tell you this, please take it with a grain of salt. I mean, I think that would be irrelevant. I mean, piss is already pretty salty. I'm not yes. adding. I'm not <laughs> adding more salt to it. I mean, but maybe a little pepper. I don't know. Uh, he goes. Um, the anti-vaccine advocate warned while saying people might now think he is cray cray. Now drink urine. He continued. This vaccine <laughs> is the worst bioweapon I have ever seen. He concluded. I drink my own urine. Reached her comment by the Daily Beast on Sunday night. Key doubled down on what he calls urine therapy and railed against foolish people who took the COVID-19 vaccine. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, again, like who's six to nine to 10 months from now, probably there's probably going to be someone who suggests that, yes, you should drink your own urine. But I mean, I must stress, why not? I mean, what's the difference between drinking your own urine and drinking someone else's urine? You know where it's been. Like the chain of custody. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Drinking your you know own, you have drunk, and then therefore you know what you are drinking. Whereas you don't know what somebody else has put in their body before they piss. Yeah, drinking your own urine is that's farm to table. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's that's factory shit. If you're just getting it off the street. Yeah. Like they're they're, they're paying they're paying hobos, you know, to <laughs> to, to to piss into to jugs after they've shot up or whatever. I, I don't want that in my body. Yeah. Have you ever been to one of the factory piss farms? <laughs> it's awful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's yeah, like uh, a five mile. There's a five mile stretch of uh of the 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 uh, I five in California that's just oh god, it was uh, horrible. Piss farms, it's horrible. Ooh. Tough, did, tough, tough to drive did, by it, there. It, yeah, I mean, did like, you know? <laughs> did you know that the piss ranchers are hunting wolves almost to extinction because the wolves scare the pissers? <laughs> yeah, they can't pee. They get they get shy because they hear the howl. <laughs> <laughs> okay so okay we got okay um drinking your own piss uh to cure covid um and then on top of that we have we have now literal testosterone blocking um like like hormone blockers that um uh yeah like i mean that yeah that stand a good chance of if not outright bimbo -fying you then at least uh demasculinizing you by blocking yeah. testosterone that's yeah. you know usually used as part of yeah like i said a transitioning process felt as we know what's coming next. I mean, we know what the next miracle cure is. Come. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, your own, mine. Oh, man. No, your actually, own? That, oh, yeah, never no, mind. No, no. That's no, no, mine. Cares. Mine. Oh, man. Oh, mine specifically. Okay. I, right, <laughs> okay. Well, your cum is special because it's like upper Manhattan cum. Because that's like the best in the world. Everyone knows it. It's like, it's like champagne for the champagne region. But... Uh, uh, come up from the Upper West Side is just known yeah. as the seminal fluid. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's just sparkling, yeah. sparkling seminal fluid. If you get Red Hook cum, you might as well kill yourself. You're a loser. <laughs> but like, if that's the case, like, then I'm not so stupid for being tricked in the Equinox sauna all those times. <laughs> it's you know, true. Here, am it's I? It's true. You're getting that good. You're getting that uh, good cum, Upper West Side cum. It's got the D'Agostino's pineapple in it. High yeah. quality, well sourced produce. Yeah, a lot of people who know me know that five times a week for since May last May, I have been tricked into being slutted out by seventy five year old real estate tycoons <laughs> named like Merv and Herman. <laughs> five times a week, I, they it's the same location. They always <laughs> trick me. They always say there's a hot girl in there. <laughs> or like they're like gonna give me one of their watches or something. I always just get a train run on me by ten septuagenarian real estate titans. Yeah, and I am like, you know that thing where your fingers prune and you you're like shaking stuff out of your ears when you go swimming too long. Mm -hmm. That's what it's been like with old ma old Jewish cum with me. <laughs> It's how many times okay. I've been okay. fooled in the well, same you, location by the same guys. Okay, but have now you COVID, I am though? never. Yeah. Well, I actually, yeah, but like <laughs> it wasn't that bad. And you got to yeah. figure that I'm doing something right here. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure this is all in the Kabbalah somewhere. Like that's well, okay. the way to, to who's clear a, yourself. Who's also yeah. who's also a fan of Kabbalah, ancient Jewish mysticism, current New York City mayor, Eric Adams. Yep. So, I mean, I think he need, I think like everyone's just like, oh, I want to give everyone the N95s, give everyone the at home testing. It's like, no, Eric Adams, we got to reopen up the city's glory hole centers. 
Yep. Gotta, yes. We gotta have we gotta have a a state city funded network of like well maintained glory hole facilities where people can get a shot of just the, the shot that works. A shot of come to the mouth. Yeah. And the thing is, like if someone's homophobic or whatever, like they just don't like blowing someone, they can't like think about others for just one second. Um, you could just be like, it's actually a hot chick on the other side. <laughs> no, yeah, uh, just pretend. You don't know. Ninety yeah. it could okay. it might be. Yeah, you you'll never know. know. No, no. This is this is disinformation. Historically, I mean this is like the, the glory hole is a centuries old invention. Okay, this has been around for centuries. Ninety-five percent of who it's is on been the as other long side as long the as glory. humans have been peeing, there have been glory holes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was how do you think Hammurabi was elected? Ninety-five <laughs> percent of the people who are servicing you on the other side of a glory hole are incredibly hot women. It's a yeah. fact. I mean, it's just. I mean, like they 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 don't, they, don't, they don't want you to know the truth because yeah. they're hiding the miracle cure. From the from the rest of us, yeah. Why do you think Obama rode in all those limos? <laughs> that was COVID's one through eighteen. <laughs> he swallowed all of them, and yet yeah. he gets no credit. Yeah, everyone's like, oh, like if you're against Obama, you're like he got slutted out in the limo. If you're for Obama, you're like he didn't. But how about if you don't like Obama, but you're like he was smart to do that? Yeah, that's what. Obama's building a monstrosity of a presidential library. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's like destroying yeah. a bunch of parkland. Yeah. He's like destroying, <laughs> so destroying Chicago. He's awesome. I love what a piece of shit he is. He's just, he is ever, it's like he spent eight years uh, shining everybody on. And then, he, like, he fucking turned into Ashton Kutcher as soon as he left office. Like, you've been punked. And I'm going to, like, you and they don't get it, of course, because they're too invested in him. And he just every day he just knows more and more to be like, No, I punked you. I'm going to like a cartoon villain, like the bad guy in an 80s breakdancing movie. I'm going to destroy a big park <laughs> in Chicago and build this, this hideous, mo hideous monument to myself. Yeah, he's building a historic parkland to build like the Apple store in Abu Dhabi. Yeah, and there's like he's there's awesome. a bunch of like. Uh, like failed project shit, like uh, like uh, dead uh, interchanges that could be knocked down and turned into it that are just waiting. There's plenty of areas in Chicago that are undeveloped or need to be redeveloped. They could have put it in. He's like, no, I want to kill things to build this. No, I need to kill an ecosystem to build this, or I can't get hard. Just like just west of that area, but yeah, there's so much just dead, like yeah. dilapidated shit, and it's like, oh, you could like put something here. No, like there are places where just no one really is living. That's and creative. Like, no, yeah, you. no, yeah. It's like, yeah, if you even like, if you're with like neoliberal bullshit, where it's like, oh yeah, like we like we need economic development here. Uh, yeah, that's like that's the only way we can fix things. Which is like, yeah, it helps sometimes, but like he's not even doing that. He's going in the neighborhood where you Chicago is and just taking a historic park and like building a building that looks like a hairdryer. He's such a piece <laughs> of shit. I like, he's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> like he hates, he hates everyone who loves him. He would kill anyone to like, yeah, fucking shake hands with Quincy Jones. I love him. And this is why I think that uh, Eric Adams is the next, he's the next Pokemon evolution and the superior version the, the to meet the moment the way that Obama did because Obama's doing all this stuff now, but he was all about shining us on as, as president and as running for president. He was willing to say whatever. But Eric Adams is just out there, just telling you like it, telling it like it is. Tell, <laughs> telling the people uh, to suck it the fuck up and that, they yeah, they need to start uh, reading the cabal if they want any help in the world. I mean, yeah. I, know you, I know you guys are, are, are West Coast people now. Or did you see I'm a lifelong we're just, Californian. We're just yesterday. <laughs> there was a fire in in the Bronx that killed nineteen people, and the landlord on what that was like uh, it used to be public housing that was like sold to this landlord is yeah. on Eric Adams' administration as his like one of his housing consultants. This transition team for it's housing. Transition yes. team for housing. Is, these are these are this yeah. is a building that people had been asked had been saying had no heat. Yeah, and for they're months. saying it yeah. took Eric. It took Eric Adams. 
four days to have a Grenfell. Yeah. <laughs> My fucking <laughs> make, God, and, and what did dude. he say today? He, he said, he said, he said close the door. Close the door. Just close the door. It's your fault. And Fuck the door, you. Okay, the door is in question. Yes, they're supposed, the fire doors are supposed to be closed. The, they're supposed to automatically close. And guess what? They were broken in this fucking building. Cause yeah. And also, the shit they should landlord. have heat the building that you don't have to. Yeah. So you don't Use have to space do it in your own heater. place. So you don't have to do space heaters and little, like make a fire out of kindling. And he's like, yeah, close the door, idiots. Your own fault. Yeah, I read. Fourth day in office. I read about this guy, the landlord. It's like, yeah, he's running like a Victorian boarding house. Yeah. Like this guy should be executed. Yes. And it's like, yeah, no, he's just sticking around. Um, Sorry, just back to um <laughs> Obama destroying uh, parks in Chicago to uh, build his monstrous presidential library. I'm thinking is like as part of this package deal. He could replace public transportation in Chicago with uh, Blade Runner style blimps that just circle the city and announce uh, my favorite new artist this year, Phoebe Bridgers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then uh, 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 and uh, uh, just just a reminder, uh, don't drink piss and cum to cure COVID. It doesn't work. <laughs> Wink. Uh, uh-huh. Instead, you should uh, watch uh, Mayor of Easttown on HBO. <laughs> I love, I love him. I love him being like sixty years old now, and he's like still, he's still the same guy. He's like, yeah, I listen to Lu- Lucy Dacus. I, well, I've considered being bisexual. Who's Lucy and, Dacus? And he, I'm probably not saying that right. She's <laughs> Did you like make that um, up. No, she's like Phoebe Bridgers is. If Phoebe Bridgers is Little Dirk, Lucy Dacus is King Vaughn. Oh yeah, dead? this is a real person. He didn't make that up. No, <laughs> okay. yeah, there she is. you think I? When have I ever fucking made a person? I, up I, on the that show? is one of my favorite things about you, Felix, when you bust out knowledge of some contemporary uh, female singer songwriter. Always what, capable of surprising. You know what Sean Moorhead said about me? What he said that I'm like uh, the blade of like gay men in that I'm not a gay man, but I like know all the stuff. You really do. I think your brother helps with that. Yeah. He's like, yeah. A, so he's like your gay consigliere. Yeah. That, yeah. I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm plugged. It's like, but the, you remember yeah. when, uh, remember the Pete Buttigieg documentary where he was like, if I could have the surgery to cut out being gay, like, yeah, just, I would uh, do give, it. give me the knife right now. It's like, if you, Felix, if you could have the surgery to be gay, you would oh, get yeah. that surgery. You know how much easier my life would be? Like, I I know so much more, like, of that stuff than, like, about... Be- I, don't, I don't know what the football teams are. I don't know any of that shit. Like, I, I, I have, like... I have a lot of heterosexual interests, but, like, you know, there are a lot of things I'm just... There's a lot of pulling, wasted pulling knowledge out. that could have yeah. gone to use Yeah, uh, if you were just gay. Yeah. Well, maybe in my next life. Yeah, you have to you have to be a really good straight guy to be reincarnated as like a gay guy with sweat. Yeah, you have to walk the whole golden path to get rewarded yeah. with that. You yeah. should be re- you should be reincarnated as barstool gay man. <laughs> that guy would be cool. That's gonna be me. Uh, but yeah, no, yeah, uh, he but he's sixty years old and he's you remember in his like his like ninth memoir. Yeah, he writes a new memoir every year. Motherfucker it, loves writing about his shit. Yeah, he loves himself. But like, mm-hmm. he he was like talking about trying to fucking like just fuck all these bisexual chicks in college, and yeah. they were just like, "You're like you suck. Fuck you. Fuck you." <laughs> but he's still trying. He's still trying. He's like, I love all this like sad girl music. He's like, he's gonna start wearing a Carhartt beanie. <laughs> he's gonna show up I at would, Union Pool. Yeah. Do you think it would be funny if him and Michelle got divorced? I always think about that. Uh, I hope, I, I hope I that got, happens. I got to do me. Yeah. Because he, he, yeah, he cheated on her with like a copywriter, a 27 year old copywriter. <laughs> yes. uh, we can only hope that that happens. Yeah. Well, um, I'm moving on for today. I'd like like to switch gears now to a uh, a very lengthy profile in the Washington Post that came out uh, last week about you know probably one of my favorite contemporary political figures. I mean we've we discussed him at length on the show, um, but he's a gift that continues to give. It's J D Vance, everyone. J O Vance. J D. J D. In the straight shot. Uh, There's a big profile of his um, you know a political campaign running for Senate. 
that he's you know will win five votes. He he will win five votes and then be burned at the stake by Josh Mandel. What was it, Felix? You said that like JD Vance is a guy who like pretends to be um like a Jewish intellectual, but is actually a hillbilly. And uh, fucking Mandel is a guy who is a Jewish intellectual who pretends to be a hillbilly, but is a billion times better at it. No, no, no. I think like. So, like, up until 2020, J.D. Vance, like, his entire book, his book is, like, one of the most cynical things I've ever read because he's just, like, calling everyone he's ever known just, like, a piece of shit and it's their fault for being poor. And he's like, yeah, but I'm actually, I actually went to college to learn how to be Jewish, something they could never do. <laughs> and was, like, doing that his whole life. He was like, Donald Trump's disgusting. And then he apologized for his pre-unwoke phase and now he's pretending to be like a jug hooter again. And yeah. It's like you already blew your wad, dude. Yeah. Meanwhile, Josh Mandel is like, he's Jewish. He did all the stuff. He did Bar Mitzvah. He like looks Jewish. He has a Jewish name. But like his person, he has the soul of a jug hooter. Yes. That's what he is. He's a jug hooting cretin. That's and the thing is that, it, of course, the Jew does it better than the dumbass sheep like uh, Anglo. Always. I, I kind of, I don't know. I like believe Josh Mandel to an extent because like, don't you think that's kind of what's beautiful about America? That like a, like an actual shit kicker is he gets, he gets buck broken by Yale and like goes to this cultural milieu and tries so hard that he just, he becomes what people think the Jewish guy would be like. Like he's, he's like inauthentic talking yeah. about this shit that he, he maybe won at one point, like in his adolescence was, but then the Jewish guy just by like growing up in Ohio is like a real jug hooting moron. Yeah, like, no, dips. he's committed to it his whole life. And more than anything, it, it reminds you that all of this is fucking fake and made up. <laughs> it's made up, but it, it's it, like, come on, man. Like, like the idea that people invest in the notion that there is like an authentic American culture that exists, like, independent of capitalism and that is somehow being like oppressed by capitalism, like that it can be disentangled and that, and that like certain Americans can like speak to it and embody it, uh, is I think here shown to be complete bullshit. Like everybody is out for themselves in, in a fucking marketplace, uh, wherever, where the only thing to do is, uh, is advance yourself. And that means that, Culture is just a costume to wear to your own advantage. And the only difference is how good you are at bullshitting at the end of the day, how well, good you are <clears throat> at convincing yourself of what you're trying to convince other people of. And well, Josh Mandel is much better at that than J.D. Vance because J.D. Vance spent too much of his life trying to escape before finding out, oh, if I want if I want to get what I really want, which is, of course, you know, uh, uh power or the illusion of power and fame and all this stuff. Uh, I'm now in a cul-de-sac where I have to go back and I have to rediscover this thing that I spent my entire life disavowing and he just can't do it. His instincts are all wrong because his only audience, as we've talked about, is other people like him who are well, Matt, not voting in Ohio yeah, Senate primaries. Matt, it reminds me of uh, what we were talking about with World War II, where it's really like an internal battle played out between the West and Germany yeah. because they, they, the same right, identity yes. problem mm -hmm. with Germans where they're like, Oh fuck. We're Ju like, we're Jewish, not yeah. literally Jewish, but Jewish for stand in for like a, yeah. a, a, an effect, like we're urbane, modern, urbane, we're, we're, modern, we're away Western from the now. earth. We're, we're yeah. neurotic. Yes. And they went crazy because of it. And they, they decided we're going to pretend it's not real. We're going to disavow it. We're going to disavow it. We're going to kill. We're going to try to kill all of them. And then we're like, we're so into proving that we're not Jewish that we're going to devote military resources to going to Antarctica to try to meet Santa Claus. Yes. <laughs> like, and then you have, they're, they're, they're uh, J.D. Vince. And yeah. then Josh Mandel's America, where it's like, okay, like, yeah, fine. We're, we're, the, we're the theatrical performing country. Our top general almost quit the war because he had like, he, he fell in love with a French woman and cried. All our guys <laughs> cry every fucking day at their job yep. of running World War II, but that's who we are. That's just what it is. We can do both. That's yeah. Josh, Josh Mandel is like, yeah, I've like, I'm look, he's like, yeah, I take more medicine than anyone on earth. I love taking I'm medicine. I'm the most allergic man. Yeah, I have eight types of dehumidifiers and humidifiers. I fucking, do I like 
blow on a shofar every day. <laughs> but uh, I'm also the, I'm also a shit kicker because I'm yeah. also a true Ohioan. And that's beautiful. That shows how strong America is. It's really. true. It really does assimilate all of your uh, cultural neuroses and directs them towards the singular goal of bag securing, yes. which those uh, old world euros just could not get in their heads and it, they destroyed themselves. We well, can do I, it. I think this article will go a long way towards explicating these um, the, these the unique factors of um, identity creation and capitalization. And, you know, J.D. Vance is an interesting case study in this because he was always kind of pretending to be a shit kicker in the first place. Oh, absolutely. Like, I mean, yeah. he's from well, the Ohio suburbs. I know there, there, and, there like, is Appalachian, summers. Ohio. Like, there's yeah. Western, Eastern Ohio is, is near the Appalachian stuff. But Ohio, at the end of the day, is a giant suburb. All right. Let's, uh, let's, let's dive into this article here. It says, let's start with the beard. J.D. Vance didn't used to have one. I mean, I don't know. Did he get married recently? Did, did I miss that? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think he realized. I think he realized he just has one of those unfortunate cherubic faces. <laughs> yeah, someone, someone you're close to, someone you know, may have one, and he yeah. may shut the fuck may, up, Felix. Uh, me, I'm talking about me. <laughs> me, I, I have to do it. I, I have, Van, I have Vance's disease. Where even at my most pro Anna, I have, I have cheru the cherubic cheeks of the yeah, old world. A, a round face, sort of at, at a certain point, a certain age. Age needs needs something. If I shaved right now, I would be beaten to death, and I deserve it. <laughs> it says uh, the Vance who in 2016 achieved incandescent literary fame with his memoir "Hillbilly Elegy", Hillbilly Elegy was all baby fat and rounded edges. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Vance I'm watching now from the back of a coffee shop in the depressed steel town of Steubenville, Ohio, has covered up his softer side. And, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the, the headline image that goes with this thing is like, it's, it's illustrated and it's like, um, it's like an, like an oil style painting of the old cherubic JD Vance. And then it's like the sheet is torn and there's like the angrier bearded JD Vance behind it. <laughs> And I gotta say, both of them look exactly the same. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's, it's the all same, soft edges. It's, it's all the same. Yeah. Francis Buxton ass little <laughs> chubster, <laughs> but with some fucking uh, some barber shop trimmings stuck to his face. <laughs> yeah, he really thought he did something with a beard, and it's like no, like Ted Cruz, yeah. another oh, guy God. doing the exact same thing. Uh, yeah, it's they. They were going for like the Uncle Phil. They were like, "I'm gonna be like a, a, I'm big, but I'm alpha." And it's like, no, you got corned. Yeah, <laughs> they corned you out. You corned, they corned out, you out, slime. <laughs> <laughs> I guess he goes. Um, in small format events like this one, addressing a couple dozen primary voters, he spends about 15 minutes attacking corporate and governmental elites for failing the country, then answers questions and mingles for maybe another 45 minutes. Vance, 37, is comfortable in the folksy idiom of GOP campaigning, uh, e.g., she loved the Lord, she loved the F word, that's what Ma Ma was. It, Shut up. It doesn't, oh, say, what, it doesn't say what F word, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She the called F me the F word all me. the time. <laughs> uh, that's, uh, that's Glenn Close, right? From, yeah, yeah, Glenn Close. Yeah, from the yeah, the lady yeah. with her brilliant good Terminator, bad Terminator, <laughs> neutral Terminator concept. <laughs> I, got, I know we did have a whole episode about it, but that was like my favorite part in Hillbilly Elegy is when he's with Mama and she's just like, she's doing the lines from T2 where he, she's like, I need your clothes, your motorcycle, give them to me. And JD Vance is like, Mama, turn this off. I want to watch C SPAN. <laughs> that's, when she, that's when she used the F word. That's when she yeah. loved using the F word. <laughs> Um, goes, but he tends to gloss over his famously traumatic childhood immortalized on screen in Ron Howard's 2020 film adaptation of his book in Steubenville he paces the room with a big gulp sized foam cup in his hand well now, we go, now we're going back to the, the COVID treatment we were talking about earlier yeah. <laughs> uh, as, ever, as an, uh, an every man that touches an every, an every man touch that accentuates his new aesthetic is he pretending to be a soda head? <laughs> he's yeah, he's Bro, trying to off. convince these rubes that there's full strength soda in that cup. <laughs> he's never a full strength soda has not touched his lips since he was a child. That is he's yerba drinking, mate. Yeah, he's drinking hibiscus soda yep. with Peter Thiel. No one believes you. Name it like name five variants of Mountain Dew right now, <laughs> not including diet in zero. Like fuck off. You can't. Josh Mandel, I believe that like I believe I can talk to about him talk to him about sodas for 
like hours. Absolutely. I think Josh, he knows all the stuff. Josh Mandel drinks out of a hummingbird feeder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You are not a soda head, JD. Like, uh, fuck you. He goes, uh, I'm not the only one thinking about JD Vance's beard. <laughs> like, mm. I'm, I'm thinking about it too. I'm thinking about it too. But I mean, come on. He's got. He's got. He has. He has at least two kids with this beard. Come on. <laughs> um. Recently, I asked one of his law school friends to tell me about his personality. He's lovely. The friend said, describing v- Vance's smile and laugh. Then he paused. He wanted to talk about Vance's facial hair. Even as a slightly older law student. Vance had served four years in the Marines before enrolling at Ohio State as an undergraduate. He came across as guileless, boyish, no longer. He looks different, the friend said. He's going for a kind of severe masculinism thing. He looks Is it like working? Don- he looks like, and he goes, he goes, he looks like Donald Trump Jr. <laughs> <laughs> Another yeah. guy who's severe not trying masculinism. hard at all. Another yeah. symbol of effortless masculinity. If you put Gavin Newsom and Don Jr. in a row, it's like, okay. Kimberly Godfall like, has. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. But, like, just ask anyone. Like, who's more alpha? Yeah, not a And question. it's like, no, yeah, it's, no it's, the guy, it's the guy who spends $5,000 a month on skincare. I'm sorry. But Don Jr. Alpha, has, he's got no chin. Yeah. Well, yes, he, he, and it's just like, I don't know. Alpha's in the soul. And, like, Gavin may do a, Gavin may just uh, slurp down seafoam and like buy Korean face masks and shit, but it's just like, you see it in his heart. You're like, it's, that's, that's the thing. It comes down to sincerity. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, like Gav, gruesome. Gavin is a sincere coastal, uh, bug creature. Uh, and he is at peace with it. And Mandel yeah. has turned himself through just sheer will and alchemy into a, a soda head, uh, <laughs> Ohio headphone dipshit. Yeah, uh, fucking JD Vance has been trying to be something he hasn't been his entire life. That's all he can do. He's just yeah. a fraud. He's JD Vance is like um he's like a Matt Damon in The Departed. If he died instantly, his first undercover mission. <laughs> <laughs> if he wasn't good at it at all. Wait, it was Leo was the undercover guy? Whatever. <laughs> you know, like I think uh, I think that's kind of the point of the movie that they could be the same. You're right. Guy. You're right. Yeah. Well, They're very similar. Uh, defeated once again. <laughs> yeah. uh, toward the end of our conversation, which was mostly about the way the way the culture shock of Yale Law School informed Vance's politics, I asked the friend if he wanted to discuss anything else. He returned to the beard. That's honestly occupied an outsized amount of my attention, he said. <laughs> the beard, the beard isn't a bad symbol for Vance's U.S. Senate campaign, or at least for how that campaign is being received. Discourse around the race centers mostly on the idea that Vance is a changed or fraudulent person. Five years ago, Vance was eloquently decoding Donald Trump supporters for liberal elites while lamenting the rise of Trump himself. Vance whose mother is a recovering heroin user, compared Trump to an opioid, calling him an easy escape from the pain. Now, since announcing his run, he's reversed himself on Trump and adopted a bellicose persona at odds with the sensitive bookish JD of his memoir. On Veterans Day, 48 hours after the Steubenville event, Vance tweeted that LeBron James of Akron, Ohio, is one of the most vile public figures in our country. (laughs) <laughs> oh, he, he, I hate he, you, he, traitor. <laughs> he, he tweeted that LaFraud only has Mickey Mouse rings. <laughs> yeah, that's again. It's like Mandel probably has so many stupid nicknames for LeBron. And J.D. Vance had to hire a team of 20 people to like find find ones like lay bisexual that aren't even used that often. <laughs> like, like c- come on now. J.D. Vance didn't even he didn't just like decode Trump and like Trump supporters. His book was literally saying his entire presence until last year yeah. was, was um, no, they support Trump because they're bad. Yes. Yeah. You shouldn't empathize with them. Yeah. They're bad people. They have bad that. character. They deserve nothing but scorn. That was that was that's why he was so beloved by liberal elites. Of course, made into because a fucking he, Hollywood movie. Oh, exactly. Like he because he told liberal elites what they've all been longing to hear, which is like, oh. I'm smart enough that I can have my own chas- uh, my own side in politics chastised by this this real authentic person, which, who's by also the way, Yale Law School. But his solution was that, like, um, don't feel bad for any poor person because any intervention by the state that you advocate to uh, provide them uh, money, health care, a decent quality of living, they'll only ruin it by spending it on soda and heroin. Yep. So you're and of course, off the funny trying. thing is, is this is exactly what. Uh, conservatives have been gobbling up for a generation about black people and liberals have been horrified by it 
But because this is people they imagine as the obstacles to progress, the reactionary white hillbillies, that they'll accept the exact same uh, explanation from Vance. Yeah, yeah and it, yeah, and if you're talking about like anyone, like the the loca, like the cultural locus for either side, whether it's like Vance saying that like it's poor pill- hillbillies' fault that that they're like this, and like of course they support Donald Trump, they're bad, he's bad, or like conservative conservative racism towards black people. In either event, you are talking about like specific groups of specific populations that aren't voting because they're poor. Yes, these are poor people who don't fucking vote. He's saying he's saying that people who live in like thatched huts in the valley are voting for Trump. No, they like haven't voted ever. Yeah, but but they but wealthy liberals don't want to feel anything for really anybody. They feel obligated to feel bad for poor minorities. But poor white people, in their mind, have it coming because, hey, why didn't you succeed? I don't have any kind of architecture to excuse your failure the way I do for minorities. So at the end of the day, I have nothing but contempt for you. Please give me an excuse for my contempt. And he was right there to give it to them. It's so funny watching him now try to pretend that he cares about the opiate uh, uh, epidemic and how like uh, Washington and liberals don't care about all the people dying in the heartland when he was up until a minute ago tell, saying, yeah, that's their problem. That's their fault. They, they started, uh, they stopped uh, going to church. They have it coming. Yeah. And the, and the climax of uh, the movie, and I'm assuming uh, his book is him flushing his mom's works down the toilet and then just being like, time to go cold Turkey. Time for some real fucking, uh, time to face the music. And it's just like, good. Yeah. Good luck killing your mom. dude. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh my God. And he I goes, would be, I would be off perks every day if that was my son. <laughs> And his Has big, he ever like, thought about that? Maybe it's his fault. His his big uh the big third act like uh moment of truth is when he has to decide uh whether to stay with his mom who's withdrawing or go to his uh fucking like internship interview and he just drives to fucking Princeton and that's like his <laughs> his heroic decision like th- that is the decision of the PMC bug creatures who who stab their own families in the back to get ahead that you are now pretending to care about. It's the most, it's astounding watching him try to fucking pull this off. Yeah, he is, it's not just that he's a bug man. It's not just like, oh, you're a teal venture capitalist. It's like you are the bug man. Yes. You, not, yeah, you, you literally brag about turning your back on your family. Yeah. And, and you, you rose to fame saying, kill all of these people. Mm-hmm. They should die because I think they voted the wrong way, even if they didn't vote. Fuck them. Yeah. Uh, going on in the article, it says here, um, I felt uh, just I, uh, I felt him straining to deliver his talking points in an angry register. It, it wasn't just that steel jobs had been offshored. They were outsourced by idiots in Washington to countries that hate us. Commentary about Vance from never Trumpers and liberals tends to strike a note of personal chagrin about his evolving image. Pundit Mona Charon, writing about Vance as if he had died, called him an extremely bright and insightful man who could have been a fresh voice for a fundamentally conservative view of the world. Frank Bruni of the New York Times predicted that a Vance tweet about Alec Baldwin's recent accidental shooting incident would endure as one of the boldest markers of his descent. In Ohio, meanwhile, the pressure on Vance runs entirely in the opposite direction. Every can sta- campaign stop he makes, he patiently tries to explain away his past never Trumpism, which has been exhumed in the form of deleted tweets and Charlie Rose clips. An attack ad playing his anti Trump sound bites ends with a woman saying, That's the real JD Vance. Vance's friends split the difference. They say he's the same guy, but he's been radicalized. I think he's gotten a lot more bitter and cynical. Appropriately, conservative blogger Rod Dreher told me, <laughs> "Dude, if you if you're if you're friends with Rod Dreher, like you are a weirdo, like culturally elite. Yeah, you're not no. you're not a soda head if you're friends with Rod. Rod yeah, you're making booyah base. Fuck no, Rod does not fuck with soda. You are in the backseat of a Duesenberg with Rod and like some strapping twenty nine year old policy wonk buck in Budapest who's crying <laughs> to you about Blues Clues." <laughs> He goes, uh, to Dreher, the change in tone is justified by the course of American politics over the past five years. Trump remained Trump. 
but the left went berserk, he wrote, in a post defending Vance. Still, Dreher, who attended Vance's 2009 ba- 2019 baptism into the Catholic Church. I mean, okay. Fucking he, loser. Has a, he has a boutique religious conversion that every other extremely online fucking, like, uh, just this neurotic shithead has done the same exact fucking thing. Uh, a fucking, uh, you know, yeah. As you said, Felix, you fell off the porch that you've never left in childhood into fucking the Roman Catholic Church at the age of 38 years old. Yeah, I always think about there's a rapper that people make fun of for joining the Bloods when he was 23. And that, <laughs> that's that's our guy here. He goes, I mean, look, yeah, like, I mean, what 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 do his Appalachian relatives think of him being a member of the Roman Catholic Church? The literal whore of Babylon. I mean, yeah, no, it's like. He's a computer guy. Yeah, he met he met Rod on the computer, and the Rod and Rod was like, "Do you want to like go to this Gentile bar mitzvah?" And he was like, "Yeah, <laughs> yeah I do. <laughs> Sounds great." He goes, "Um, uh, but Rod also worries about the toll campaigning is taking on his friend." Shit posting has become the signature style of young radicals on the right. Yeah, based shit posting. Let's go, dude. Let's and this it. is this is particularly a hazard, I think, for Christians. He told me. <laughs> the surface level changes are indeed striking. Yet the more I watched him, the more it seemed to me that the emerging canon of what happened to J.D. Vance commentary was missing the point. Vance's new political identity isn't so much a, fa- a facade or, or a reversal as an expression of an alienated worldview that is, in fact, consistent with his life story. And now there's an ideological home for that worldview. Vance has become one of the leading political avatars of an emergent populist intellectual persuasion that tax right on culture and left on economics. I would like to know what, what, where, 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 where is J.D. Vance tacking left on, econ- on the economy or, or, or labor or any of the, the market, same way all these like guys that. do with vague references to the elites and stuff. And then, of course, specific arguments to break up big tech because they're censoring Mima's posts and she can't send the memes about branded memes to her granddaughter. That's it. And yeah. also it's all online. It is an internet culture of anxious weirdos who want to be Republicans, but just feel their tummy feels bad about being Republicans because of all the shit that they absorbed, all the, ambient radiation they absorbed being uh strivers and college graduates and they're trying to purge it but you but nobody else gives a shit it is their neurotic nervous breakdown nobody else cares it says known as national conservatism or sometimes post-liberalism it is in broad strokes heavily catholic definitely anti-woke skeptical of big business, nationalist mm. about trade and borders and flirty with Hungarian prime minister Viktor Orban in Congress, sucking that Orban, off. <laughs> just sonking him off. Uh, in Congress, its presence is minuscule, represented chiefly by Senators Josh Holway and Mar- and Marco Rubio. Oh yeah, true national conservative there. What is, is, I remember, is, is Marley, he, yeah, wait, is he against global free is, trade. And now? honestly, what? I think they're right. They are saying that this thing is just uh, that Walmart conservatives bullshit that like Douthat and uh, Raheem Salam were into and that they kind of got their hooks into Rubio when he was like vaguely talking about like a child allowance, uh, but with memes, it's just the yeah. next step of that with Epic memes. That's it. Yeah. It's getting mad. It's getting mad at woke capital and being like, someone should make unwoke capital. Yes, that's it. And it, and it has no meaningful purchase with any real stakeholders. It has no legislative agenda that has any chance of going anywhere. It's just vague, the most vague gestures that are only even picked up by the hyper politically conscious freaks on the internet. You know, it's literally like it's conservative Warrenism to the T. Yes. Yes. It's it's all culture. It's all culture. It's all culture. And then they'll say one thing about antitrust and they'll be like, the smart new conservatism. Yeah. Uh, Marco Rubio's child allowance bill, by the way, it was like $150 a month. (laughs) Oh, watch out there. Big spender. (laughs) Vance's Senate race is an almost perfect test of these ideas because the front runner in the Republican primary, former state treasurer and Tea Party product Josh Mandel, who, according to recent poll leads recent polling, leads Vance by six points, is the candidate of traditional conservative tax cutters. To those watching the Vance Mandel slugfest from afar, it may just look like two candidates trying to outflank each other on the right. But the fissures between them run deep. 
The Club for Growth, known for its free market zealotry, is supporting Mandel and has spent roughly $1.5 million on anti-Vance attack ads. One TV spot highlights a tweet in which Vance says he loved at Mitt Romney's anti-Trump screed. The narrator does not linger on the rest of the message, which reads, Too bad party will do everything except admit that supply-side tax cuts do nothing for its voters. Before Delance de Vance deleted his old anti-Trump tweets, he tended to attack Trump for abandoning his stated commitment to economic populism. It goes uh, going on here. It says a couple of weeks after I saw him in Steubenville, Vance called me from the road on his way to a event in Toledo. I asked about his sudden estrangement from polite society. The price of being beloved by the establishment is you don't say anything interesting, he told me. And if you don't say anything interesting, you're not going to be a useful part of solving any of the problems in this country. I like that what he was saying that was interesting earlier is uh, the fraud is the biggest, most evil person in American <laughs> culture today. Yeah, no, there's a guy, there's a conservative guy on Twitter known as the Muff Sniffer who says the same interesting things as J.D. Vance, but with swag. He's a 70 year old man who's always posting like full pussy shots from like penthouse. <laughs> uh, what Vance is saying now may or may not prove appealing to voters, but it certainly meets the test of being interesting. This is what he says. Dominant elite society is boring. It is completely unreflective and it is increasingly wrong. He told me, in other words, I kind of had to make a choice. <laughs> so, this like is, the reflexive so opposite, on yeah. the other hand, is really interesting. I, by definition, it is as boring as the reflexive thing you're responding to. It can't be any. It cannot be interesting if the thing you're responding to isn't interesting. Do you remember when he said he was like, um, "If you donate ten thousand dollars to this super pack, you could have dinner with me and Peter Thiel." <laughs> yep, <laughs> dude. And Mandel, Mandel, Mandel owned him. He was like. If you give me $5, I'll hang out at Chick-fil-A parking lot. Yeah, Boom, no, <laughs> that was awesome. That was, that was, that was awesome. Bodied. Bodied. <laughs> yeah. uh, jumping ahead here. Uh, it says, uh, in November, Vance delivered the closing speech at the second annual National Conservatism Conference held at, the, held at a Hilton in Orlando near SeaWorld. I, they should have just held it at SeaWorld. SeaWorld's the perfect embodiment of uh, national conservatism. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, completely cruel, needless, shitty place. No one likes. I'm 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 feeding LeBron. I'm feeding LeFraud to Tillicum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they could. Yeah, they could have effigies of LeBron that they throw to the whales. Uh, so uh, uh the, the his keynote address was called "Universities Are the Enemy." I mean, like this guy spent more time in college than like. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Jamie, you <laughs> you fuck? love college. You love school. He you loves love school. It. <laughs> you like spent more time at school than anyone I know. You served in the Marines so you could go to school for free. That's how much you love school. Every one of his like too clever by half, uh, thread the needle, uh, national conservative troll posts that he creates specifically to trigger. Uh, online liberals and leftists and have, of course, with no consideration of anybody who actually might vote in his election cares about. He is doing that within his mind, some invisible college professor over his shoulder. And he's just imagining the A he's going to get for how clever he was. Yeah. He's the he's, most college broken person on earth. He's never stopped doing homework ever in his yep. fucking life. Mandel, like, look, if Mandel is like totally lying, He's not doing it from a homework perspective. He's like a he's like a classic Jewish performer. Mm -hmm. He's in the tradition of Al Jolson. Yes. <laughs> Very good. Uh, he goes here. Um, uh, the left, he argued, pushed for lax border control while average Americans were the ones overdosing on fentanyl from Mexico. Grocery and gas. Ooh, they have it coming. They, they have weak uh, uh, morals. And they yeah, do you think to, that uh, hip hop? Yeah, do you think that's good or bad, Jay? <laughs> Grocery and gas bills were skyrocketing, but Janet Yellen escaped blame for inflation because she is the first female Treasury Secretary. So long as we're trailblazing on diversity, equity, and inclusion, Vance complained, it doesn't matter if normal people get screwed. After the speech, Dreher says, Vance texted him, when you realize that culture war is class warfare, everything becomes easy. Yeah, I bet it does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. It simplifies things. Oh, I yeah. can just talk bullshit forever, and I never actually have to do anything. Wonderful. JD so. JD announces that if he was president, he would let a white child pick his secretary of education. <laughs> 
cis white child will lead the way. <laughs> uh, it says national conservatism is the intellectual version of Trumpism, committed to the populist reorienting of the GOP. And that is a away- contradiction in terms, by the way. That <laughs> Trumpism cannot be intellectualized. The whole point of it is that it annihilates and negates intellectualism. Yeah, that's, it, the, that's the, it, the def- that is it is that's the appeal of it. Yeah, that it's whatever he wants it to be. Yes, there's no teacher, there's no professor over your shoulder. You just get to do what you want. That is the dream. Intellectualizing it is the opposite of that. Uh, Vance's immersion in this universe can be traced to his close relationship with the billionaire venture capitalist Peter Thiel. A Another Nacon- man of the people. <laughs> yeah. Literally, Nacon- he's made up of the people whose blood he has stolen. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, a NatCon eminence who delivered the conference's opening speech and has plunked $10 million into a pro Vance super PAC. Vance met Teal about a decade ago after he gave a lecture at Yale that spoke to the dissatisfaction Vance felt with Ivy League life. Teal's reputation on the left has become a word salad of villainous associations from the demise of Gawker to the rise of surveillance capitalism. Oh, I, Gawker, I, I, I bet the voters love that, you fucking idiot. Fucking Ohio Republican primary voters. Ooh, oh, I, I hated, I hated Gawker. I hated Gawker stalker. I hated how they treated celebrities. Oh, I hate all, I hate Nick Denton. I can't stop thinking about him. You're a fucking moron. <laughs> He says, but before he was associated with politics, he was largely known as a critic of technological stagnation, captured by his fa- famous line, we wanted flying cars. Instead, we got 140 characters. I mean, if, if that's true, like Peter Thiel, be, oh, we all thought we'd have flying cars when we were a kid. Do you know how bad a fucking idea of flying cars would be? Yeah, like, I don't want flying cars. I don't even want self-driving cars. Flying cars no. would be like... Imagine all the problems uh, of deadly auto crashes, but on um, three, like <laughs> 10,000 feet in the air. I think it's a good idea because like, what if you're looking at your phone and you think you're going to crash into someone? It used to be you could only go right or left. Now you can go up or down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's classic bad infinity stuff. Like the future is just the present with more, not yeah. not not what you want. No transformation. Um, I'm just like, skipping ahead a little bit. Um, uh. If you look for it, elements of Vance's current critique were in Hillbilly Elegy, too. People like his grandfather, who moved to southwest Ohio to work in the then-bustling Armco steel plant, strengthened the local social fabric as producers. A generation later, with jobs disappearing, his mom and neighbors were not just isolated and angry, but also, he wrote, consumerist. Just before the pandemic, uh, Vance and Giovanni, uh, I'm skipping ahead of the fuck, I don't care that this guy's, uh, recorded an episode of a podcast together. Giovanni asked whether Vance's nationalist vision could devolve into a more jingoistic or bigoted form. Vance acknowledged the risk, but countered that a healthy nationalism was an antidote to right-wing, grievous po- right-wing grievance politics. With this hyper-atomized approach to, uh, what this hyper-atomized approach to living has done is it's denied people a sense of solidarity, he said. I think some people go and find it in their racial identity or ethnic identity, and I think that's especially dangerous. But what does national cons- what, what does a national conservative vision look like in a primary campaign that doubles as an audition for Trump's endorsement? The answer often has been Vance's own coarse brand of identity politics. In July, he gave a sneering speech about the childless left, including Representative Alexandria Ocasio Cortez and Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg, whose twins were delivered about a month later. On Twitter, he called the New York Times columnist Paul Krugman one of the many weird cat ladies with too much power in this country. I. I, I like this is so funny to be like like this, like this is his version of bullying people. He's like Paul Krugman's a cat lady. <laughs> yeah, he was so, he was so his, at this, his grandmother is better at roasting people than him. What the yeah, fuck? call him a bad Terminator. Yeah. yeah, man, JD, you suck. You are not good at this shit. Jo- like Josh Mandel, when he gets home, he may panic. He may run and turn on every humidifier in his house in winter. He's like, oh my god, I was outside so long with no humidifier. I'm gonna, I'm gonna chap. I'm gonna chap. But I believe him. He's good at this. Oh, you're yeah. not, JD. You suck. Uh, Vance. I'm just skipping ahead to the end here. It says Vance's media strategy seems to be that by playing Don Jr. on the internet, <laughs> he can push for more substantive, more substantive populism in real life. Yeah, the, success, aim high. <laughs> the success of that tactic may depend on how far removed he truly seems from the Brookings Institution to Netflix pipeline he was riding until recently. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Damn. Oh, that was fucking cold. 
<laughs> in the, yeah, no, I guess as you're in November, Vance sent an invitation to. to I mean, we, uh, you already covered that. Uh, he said, Man, and Mandel replied with a picture of himself outside of Denny's. He wrote, For $10.80, anyone can join me eating fries off the hood of a car from a gas station at Denny's at midnight. <laughs> Damn. In late November, the Ohio Republican Party held a very awkward candidate forum at an evangelical church near Middletown. None of the seven candidates were allowed to rebut one another. The statements from Vance's opponents were a procession of uninspired to alarming GOP tropes. Par <laughs> party fixture Janet Timken pledged to fight back against the socialists. Mandel thundered that the election had been stolen and that America was not a country for atheism or Muslim values. Mandel, who is Jewish, is for Judeo-Christian values. <laughs> Vance, yeah. seated on the yeah. edge of the... <laughs> Vance, seated on the edge of the stage, tried to move the conversation onto his turf. Onto his turf, censorship, opioids—not just the fault of the Democrats, but of multinational corporations. Fielding a question about fiscal sanity, he pivoted away from the national debt and gave an answer about buying American-made instead of Chinese-made goods. Blaming big business certainly distinguished him from his opponents, but it did not appear to thrill the diehards in the pews. Eventually, however, Vance landed on something that got the audience going. He called for Republicans to shut down the government until Biden ended his vaccine mandate for federal workers. A vaccine mandate is exactly the sort of the idea that a common good national conservative like Vance should support. Yet a few days after the forum, I got a text message from his campaign raising money off the line. So there we go. That's that's J.D. Vance and his, you know, his identity play. The way that we can play with identity for fun and profit. Well, good we'll luck. We'll see how JD. he does. We'll see how. Good luck, JD. Good luck, Josh. Good luck, all of you. Yeah, like either way, it's there. Whoever wins is gonna lose. We're all gonna lose. It's alien versus predator. But once again, you have to have just a a, a slight preference for for skill, a, a a slight preference to see someone rewarded for doing something well, even if it's an evil thing. Uh, yeah. As opposed to just being a pathetic round fraud. And they're all going to vote the same way. J.D. Vance would not yeah, do anything no, special. It'll be the in same Congress. guy. No, yeah, same guy. Matter. Josh is, he's trying hard. He's trying hard and he's succeeding. Yeah. You know, that's all you can, that's all you could really cheer for. Mm -hmm. And no beard. No beard. Yes. No beard. There we go. Um, Anything else today, gentlemen? I think we're good. I think we're, I think good. we're good. I think we're all good. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. All right, let's run down the list here. Chapo Live shows our tour of the South. February 24th, we will be in Charlotte, North Carolina at the Underground. February 27th, we will be in Atlanta, Georgia at the Buckhead Theater. March 3rd, we will be in Nashville, Tennessee at the Basement East. On March 18th, we will be in Dallas, Texas at the Echo Lounge and Music Hall. On March 22nd, we will be in Houston, Texas at the White Oak Music Hall. And then March 24th, we will be in New Orleans at the L.A. Civic Theater. At some point in between there, we will also be doing a show in Austin. Venue to be determined. And to purchase tickets for any of these live shows, go to chapotraphouse.com 